Hello, welcome to our channel. Today we are going to discuss the South Korean drama series Descendant of the Sun Season 1 Episode 1. At the military headquarters control center, a meeting of army brass is held to deal with a volatile developing situation. Three North Korean soldiers have crossed the border and taken a couple of South Korean soldiers hostage. No gunfire has been exchanged, but tensions are high, they interpret this as a bold ploy to provoke the South into making the first act of aggression. The South can't have that, and their best option to avoid a political firestorm is to let the North Koreans go quietly. To that end, they've sent in a team of special forces agents to defuse the situation. The special forces team arrive at the front line of the standoff, outside a small bunker taken over by the North Koreans. Their leader identifies himself as Alpha Team's Captain Yushur Jean and declares that they'll be taking over the situation from the unit currently in charge. Yushur Jean and his second in command, Seo Dae Young, approach the bunker with hands raised in the open. They're allowed inside at gunpoint, the air thick with tension, while the troops stationed outside prepare explosives to use as a last resort. The North Korean leader gives up his gun, but pulls out a dagger, saying that he can't just leave without giving the Southerners a fight. Shurjin pulls out his own knife and agrees to one. After a tension-filled stare-down, the soldiers launch into a fierce knife fight, with Shurjin battling the North Korean leader and his comrade Dae Young juggling the other two enemy soldiers. They're in tight quarters and the action is fast and powerful, with both sides seemingly matched the fight swings back and forth as both sides gain the advantage and lose it. Everybody attacks amidst an air of supreme calm and concentration, no fear in sight. Everybody gets in some good blows, but the main fight between Shurjin and his quarry remains tight. At one point the alarm button gets hit and sirens start to blare, but nobody breaks focus. The intensity of the action mounts, and Shurjin and the northern leader end up outside, still locked in close combat. That's when Shurjin gets slashed in the abdomen, though he barely betrays feeling it. He's got his own knife at the North Korean's neck, but the man rightly notes that Shurjin can't shoot first, his hands are tied politically. But, he says, soldiers from the North are different and a gun cocks and points at Shurjin's head. Shurjin doesn't flinch. He corrects the North Korean leader, saying that the South can shoot if it's to keep the peace. In the distance a South Korean sniper aims his rifle, and a red dot shows up on the North Korean gunman's face. Everyone stills holds their breaths, waits. Then the North Korean leader calls off his man, easing the tension and saying it was nice to meet Shurjin. Shurjin replies that he'd prefer not to meet again, and both men drop their knives. The North Koreans walk away, and crisis is averted. Sometime later, Shurjin and Young are on leave from duty, shooting toy guns, badly, and wondering at their faulty aim, the arcade manager, Lee kwang Su and a cameo, don't know what they're doing, chiding that they all break the guns. Outside, a disturbance breaks out when a young thief steals someone's motorcycle and zooms off. Shurjin and Dae Young borrow the toy guns and station themselves in the street, positioning themselves in the thief's path. He barrels recklessly toward them, at which point the soldiers let loose a barrage of toy pellets, striking him in the face, distracting him into crashing off the bike. A grumpy and ungrateful, a Jushi retrieves his motorcycle from the scene, and Shurjin turns his attention to splinting the thief's injured leg. After sending him off in an ambulance, the soldiers chat in a cafe, and Dae Young expresses sympathy for the young delinquent in the making. It strikes a chord with his own youth, when he'd engaged in gangster activity before, turning things around, and he sighs that while there's not a lot of difference between them, this guy is set to become a criminal. Shurjin gets a call from someone in the army who's not from their unit, and the name on his phone reads Yoon Myung, Ju. Dae Young leaps to prevent him from taking the call, throwing out a whole string of bribes, like dinner and expensive liquor and a date with his cousin. But when Dae Young reaches for his phone to show pictures, he realizes that the thief pocketed his phone while he was being treated. All of a sudden he's full of swears, which Shurjin notes is ironic given his earlier sympathy. Young Thief is brought to the hospital and a nurse picks up Dae Young's stolen phone when it falls to the ground. A call comes in from the same person who'd called Shurjin, Yoon Myungju, and the nurse answers and tells Myungju that the phone's owner is at the hospital following an accident. 
Inside, we meet Dr. Kang M. Oyun who assesses young thief's injuries, aided by the diagnostic notes Shirjin had written on his arm. Among them, thief, administered treatment as painfully as possible. The thief protests loudly to be let go, and the second he's left alone, he strips off the splint and hobbles away. Mo Yun speaks with a senior doctor about a position she's up for, but gets distracted to see the thief off in the distance making his getaway. She excuses herself and goes after him, and wheels him back inside against his protests, he wants to be let go, arguing that his Hyungnams will be sending him to the morgue next. But Mo Yun and the nurses are a tough bunch and refuse to budge until he grudgingly agrees to stay. He leaves a phone with Mo Yun to prove he won't run away. And then runs away again, of course, talking on his other phone. Dae Young and Shirjin pull up at the hospital right as a crowd of gangsters strolls by and head inside a second too soon to see the thief slipping out. Shirjin continues calling Dae Young's phone without getting an answer until finally Dr. Mo Yun picks up. She's sitting just feet away from him and scoffs to see the name, Big Boss. Given the circumstances, she interprets this to mean gangster boss, so when Shirjin motions to her, she regards him coldly and tells him to wait outside. He tries to explain that she's got the wrong idea, but she's firm, and the two soldiers are pushed aside while she finishes treating a patient. Dae Young figures the thief skipped out and suggests going to look for him, though Shirjin isn't in any hurry to leave the pretty doctor he's clearly smitten with. When Dae Young shoots him a look, Shirjin suddenly fakes appendix pain, poorly, on the wrong side, before agreeing to head out. On Dae Young's hunch, they look for the gangsters they'd encountered earlier and find them brutally beating up the wayward thief. Shirjin is reluctant to get involved, but his buddy is stern and determined to step in. So the two soldiers call out to the gangsters, who laugh at them for butting. The badly beaten thief Ki Bum begs Dae Young to save him, and his friend explains that Ki Bum wants out of the gang but has to come up with an exorbitant exit fee, 5 million won, just over 4,000 US dollars, which is why he's been stealing. The gangsters jeer, asking sarcastically if Dae Young will take on the burden but Dae Young readily replies that he will, and that he's Ki Bum's older brother. Dae Young holds out his wallet, saying that he's got plenty of cash. Offering it to anybody who can snatch it from him, he invites the gangsters to go for it. A couple of guys launch themselves at him with fists and switchblades, though they're more nuisance than threat. We've already seen Dae Young fighting at his best. So no surprise that he hardly breaks a sweat knocking around the first two who come at him. Shirjin sees they're using switchblades and goads everyone to pull out their weapons now and go for it, though he's a little taken aback when no less than ten knives come out. He takes a teeny step behind Dae Young and says that at least there are no guns. Thief Ki Bum's supposed guardian arrives thinking Dae Young is the patient, and Yoon Myung Ju turns out to be a woman in army uniform, Kim Ji Won. Moreover, she and Mo Yan know each other, although there's no love lost between them. Mo Yan even jokes that there's always a man involved when they meet, which, groan. Can we not go 30 minutes without failing the Bechtel test? Myung Ju's also a doctor and she demands to see the chart, calling the patient important to me. Mo Yun simply tells Myungju to pay the patient's bill, which he skipped out on, and says that the hospital has done its duty in trying to treat him twice. Mo Yun informs a mutual colleague of Myungju's arrival that rude but pretty army doctor they interned with who stole away Mo Yun's crush. Mo Yun huffs jealously that Myungju's not even that pretty. And she didn't actually date that sunbae. She also calls Myungju crazy for dating someone now who's maybe 20 at most. But her colleague corrects her, since it's well known that Myung Ju, the daughter of a three-star general and an officer in her own right, is dating an arm officer. That's news to Mo Yun, who wonders what the deal is with Ki Bum, who left his phone with her. Shirjin and Dae Young return to the hospital with Ki Bum, who's now in much worse shape. While nurses rush to take care of him, Dae Young stands stock still upon seeing Myung Ju, who looks at him with accusing eyes and orders him to follow her. Ha, huh, no John Dae speech even. Mo Yun tends to Ki Bum's wounds and asks if it was Shirjin who did this to him. The kid insists that Shirjin was his rescuer, but she doesn't believe him, thinking he's saying it out of fear. All the while, Shirjin just sort of smiles down at her flirtatiously, though she either doesn't notice or ignores it. He chases Mo Yun out to set her straight about his character, explaining the whole story about getting the cell phone stolen, 
coming to retrieve it and saving Ki Bum from his gangster older brother. She expresses exactly zero interest in his explanation and starts to call the police to report the patient's assault. Shirjin leans in and, with a flick of his finger, knocks the phone out of her hand. Saying that involving the police would be a problem for him only supports the misunderstanding that he's a gangster, even though he tells her that he's a soldier on leave. And that getting into a tangle with the law would be a headache. He supposes that showing her his dog tags or army ID won't convince her when she's determined to believe he's lying. But then he asks if she went to a certain medical school and knows Myungju. That makes her connect some dots, asking if he's that officer. Shirjin must know she means Dae Young and says no, but assures her that Myungju can confirm his identity. Myungju confronts a stoic Dae Young with frustration and hurt, asking how long he means to keep avoiding her. She demands that he tell her why, saying that it's not that she doesn't know the reason, but that she wants to hear him. It's not the reason you think, he says stiffly. He asks her not to jump to conclusions about leaving for her sake, and says that his feelings have changed, that's all. She must think he's being pressured to leave her, and tearfully says she doesn't believe him. Dae Young walks away, ignoring her pleas to stop until she pulls rank ever the soldier, he has to stop then to give a formal salute. She orders him to stand there like that all night, until he dies. That's when Shirjin joins them to request that Myungju identify them to the skeptical M. O. Yun. Coldly, Myungju tells her, report them to the police. They're AWOL soldiers. A woman scorned, I guess. Still, Emoyan's seen enough to accept their identity, though she's not ready to absolve them of the assault and insists on checking the security footage. While they wait outside security, Shirjin stands next to her against the wall, and when his fingers brush hers, she visibly jumps. She asks how he knows Myungju, and replies that their son Bihobi from military academy. He asks if it's really necessary to see the footage, assuring her that he looks like someone who can't lie. She replies that killers are often likable. He tells her not to worry, since it's his rule to protect children, the elderly, and the beautiful. She quips that it's good to be one of the three, he banters that she's not, and she retorts that she means the elderly. It's only now that she thinks to ask his name, and gives him hers. Dae Young has guessed that Ki Bum was once an athlete, and it's another commonality between them. Dae Young practiced judo in high school, presumably before he went astray, he recognizes that Ki Bum learned to be hit like an athlete. We're talking a blow is part of the training asked why he just took it, Ki Bum replies that it would be over faster that way. He admits to practicing taekwondo, even winning gold medals. When the nurse asks for his guardian, Ki Bum insists he doesn't have one. Dae Young contradicts him. Watching the CCTV footage, Mo Young gives good reaction to seeing Shirjin and Dae Young kicking some serious butt. She gets adorably caught up in the proceedings like she's watching them live, calling out instructions, do that. Good job. Misunderstanding cleared, Mo Young apologizes for misjudging Shirjin. He replies that she can repay him by treating his pain, which sounds like a glib pickup line so she doesn't believe him when he points to his side. Or when he doubles over in pain when she pokes it. But when he lifts his shirt, she gasps to see the blood-soaked bandage. The fight tore his stitches, and as she redoes them, she recognizes his other scar as a gunshot wound. He's surprised since she isn't likely to run into gunshot wounds in Korea, but she explains seeing them in her volunteer work in Africa. Shirjin adopts a cheeky air and says he got the wound in Normandy while rescuing a comrade amidst a hail of gunfire. She asks Riley if the friend's name was Private Ryan, and he smiles at her. The obtrusive pop soundtrack informs us this is a moment. Mo Yun instructs Shirjin to disinfect his wound through the week, after which he can have the stitches removed. He asks if he can come back here every day to do it, and whether she can be his assigned doctor. She banters along when he says a doctor's looks are an important factor and agrees to see him during the week. Then he leans way in and says, as a doctor, you probably don't have a boyfriend, since you're so busy. She replies in kind, saying he probably doesn't have a girlfriend as a soldier, and he just asks, who knows what the answer will be. Back at barracks, Shirjin enlists his unit's opinions in deciding which of two identical uniforms looks better for his trip to the hospital. The others wonder why he'd travel so far just to disinfect an injury. 
until Daeyoung informs them that the dock is pretty. Shirjin points out that none of the army docks is pretty, and Daeyoung argues. A clueless soldier pipes up that Neonju is hot, but that she supposedly just got dumped really badly, and it takes the rest of the unit to shut him up. Daeyoung goes to the hospital too, to pay Ki Bum's bill for him. Guh, I just love his stoic care for the wayward soul, and it makes Ki Bum feel both grateful and awkward. Ki Bum says he can't pay him back and says a bit defensively that he doesn't want a lecture about his life, but Daeyoung doesn't expect payment and just tells him to take care of himself. Then Ki Bum asks how Daeyoung got out of his gangster past, since being beaten and paying up haven't worked. I ran away to a place they could never follow me, Daeyoung replies. In the lobby, Shirjin spots Em Oyun caught up in an emergency situation, kneeling on a gurney to stanch a patient's bloody wound. He joins the entourage of medics and helps push the gurney faster, his eyes fixed on her the whole time, though he goes wholly unnoticed by her. He waits outside the operating room for hours, but when she finally emerges, he's gone. He's working out that night, when she calls, which makes him smile. He notes that she scored his number, and she tells him to save hers. Like you have to tell him twice. I'd really like to see you tomorrow, he says, which makes her laugh at his boldness. He says in a deadpan voice that he meant for treatment, and her face falls and she quickly says that's what she meant too. She asks what time he'd like to come in tomorrow, and he asks if she'd like to meet now instead. She doesn't reply right away, and he asks, for the first time a little hesitantly, you don't want to? She replies, no, I don't dislike it. Come. So he heads over to the hospital again, decked out in civilian clothing while she primps with her PPL makeup. He waits for her in the lobby, and then his eyes land on the breaking news report showing on TV about the kidnapping of two UN staffers. Immediately his mood grows serious and he takes a call from a colleague, stepping into the elevator just as Emo Yun steps out. Shirjin calls to tell Emo Yun he's here, but has to leave. He mentions he's on the roof, so she heads up to see him there, and he apologizes for having to stand her up. A helicopter hovers overhead, which he identifies as his ride. He promises to fill her in later, and asks to meet next weekend. Not for treatment this time, but for a movie date. The helicopter lands, and he leans in to ask for an answer. She answers, I like it. He breaks into a smile and calls it a promise, then jogs over to board the copter, pausing for one look back at Mo Yun. Then he's off. A short time later, Shirjin's unit is deployed on their covert mission, which requires them to remove their identifying dog tags in case of capture. Where are we? His teammate asks. Afghanistan, Shirjin replies grimly. The hatch of their aircraft opens to reveal the landscape below them as they fly toward the fiery war zone.